right, we are continuing on with invertebrate life cycles. Today we are looking at three. We are looking at dragonflies, praying mantis, and ladybug life cycles. So let's get started, because there's quite a lot to get through today. Uh, just a reminder that you don't need to write notes. You can just relax, watch the video. Um, if you want to take notes, you can, but we really just need to just relax and take in the information as best that you can. So dragonflies is what we are learning about first. And dragonflies are insects. They have six legs, like most insects. They also have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen, also like the butterfly and moth that we saw yesterday. So remember, their head is here, the thorax is here, and this is actually all their abdomen. Okay, they have two long pairs of symmetrical wings, and the wings are mostly transparent, and the word transparent actually means see-through. So like these wings here, you can actually see through them a little bit. Um, okay, they have a long, thin abdomen, like I pointed out before. And some dragonflies are brightly colored and others are brown. Pretty, so they have a range of colors. Some are very pretty, some are just a bit dull. But dragonflies, like all other insects, they have an antenna which they use for smelling. Okay, here's the antenna there. There it is here. Okay, and they use that to smell. So they kind of feel the world around them. They use it to kind of sense what's around them. They also have really big eyes, which you can see in this picture and here. And that's because they have excellent vision. They have some of the best vision in the world out of all of the animals. And they also have a mouth. So you can see it here. And they have jaws for biting, but they do not bite humans. They only use it for their food. So if you see a dragonfly, you don't have to be afraid of it. Um, it's very, it's pretty harmless to humans and you don't have to worry about it because they don't like eating human. They like eating other insects. So we're going into the life cycle of a dragonfly now, and just like butterflies and moths, it starts with eggs. So to help them lay their eggs, female dragonflies have a tube at the end of their body, and it looks like a stinger, but it's harmless, so you can see it here. And it doesn't hurt us, they don't sting us, it just helps them lay the eggs, and it's called an ovipositor. And if you look here, these are some dragonfly eggs, so you can see how tiny they are, like just on a leaf. They just look like little white specks, so they're really small. And normally, the dragonfly lays her eggs in fresh water or on a plant near to water. So here's the dragonfly, and that's because dragonfly larvae, it's important for them to be in water. Okay, and we'll learn a little bit more about that next. So stage two, which is the larva stage, is, the, is called a nymph. And the egg hatches into a nymph and it lives underwater. So that's why, part of the reason why the dragonfly mummy lives, sorry, the mummy lays her eggs in water or near water is because the nymph or the larva, they need to live underwater. It doesn't have wings, but it can swim. So it spends its time hunting and eating other water creatures. So that's its food, okay? And just like the moth, as it eats, the nymph grows, and its skin doesn't grow with it. So each time it gets bigger, the skin splits and revealing a new layer underneath. So kind of like a snake when it sheds its skin. And this will do this, and they do it several times. Okay, then they turn into an adult. So they climb out of the water and it loses its skin for the last time, which is called molting. And that reveals the adult dragonfly. So you can kind of see it here. So he's coming out. That's the skin he had before. And now he comes out. And now he is a adult dragonfly, which is also called emerging. So he can't swim, obviously, because of the wings now. So, and we can't get wings wet, 
But yeah, so he can't swim, but he has four long wings to fly with, and dragonflies are excellent flyers. So just to recap, we have the first stage, which is egg, the second stage, with, which is nymph, and they live underwater. Then we have the emerging stage, or molting stage, where they shed their body for the last time, and then they turn into their adult dragonfly form. So, praying mantis is what we're looking at next. So what is a praying mantis? Well, a praying mantis is also an insect. An insect. It has a triangular head and a stance that looks like it is praying. Okay, so you can see here it has people often think it has its, its hands up. Um, the praying mantis is a predator that feeds on a variety of insects, so moths, grasshoppers, cricket, and flies. They can be different colors, but a lot of them are green, but some are pink and brown. And they're able to, to camouflage, which makes it a really good hunter. And it normally lives from six months to a year. So just like all insects, it has six legs. Okay, so there's your one, two, three, four, five, six. It has a hard exoskeleton, two antenna, one, two, two compound eyes, one, two, and a body that is divided into three parts. So we have the head, the thorax, and the abdomen, and it also has wings. Okay, and we're going into the life cycle now. So again, just like the dragonfly before, stage one is eggs, and the female praying mantis legs between 100 to 400 eggs, and they hatch into a tiny, so they hatch into tiny larvae, which I'll show you, while they're inside this egg case, okay? The egg case is white at first and then turns brown as it becomes harder and harder. And the eggs are kept inside the egg case to protect them from predators. And they are very small in size. Okay, here is stage two, which is larva. So this is a praying mantis larva. So the larva actually hatches from the egg, which is inside the egg case. Then they spend basically, so they hatch inside the egg case and they just hang out there until they're ready to come out. They are normally cream, like a creamy color, but they have brown bands like you can see here. And they're like little worms, so they have like body segments. Then, once they come out of the egg case, which is normally in the spring, so they're normally born like in the winter, and then when the nymphs come out of the case, they're very, very small. So they stay around the empty egg case for a while, and sometimes they actually eat each other because they need to eat. It's not crazy, praying mantis. They are intense. Uh, but also they are very delicious to bats and birds and spiders. So they have, they try to be as protected as they can. Uh, this is actually someone, this picture is actually, uh, this is the egg case here. You can see it. And this is actually, people have grown their own praying mantis. So they, they got the egg case and now they're hatching them themselves so they can release them into the wild. So then they have an extra stage, which is called an adolescent stage. And during the adolescent stage, the praying mantis goes through a, a big growth spurt, basically. So the small one here, this is an adolescent, and it looks a lot like the adult, but it's really small. So you can see here, there's a fingernail here. So it literally is just that tiny, if you look at it on your finger. Uh, they sometimes shed their skin which is one way that they're different than adults. Adults don't shed their skin, but they are basically adolescents until the beginning of summer when they become adults. And the adult only lives for a few months. It is between one to six inches long. So if you imagine the picture here, just on your finger there, this praying mantis is now sitting in the palm of his hand. 
So it's that big, okay? And the praying mantis eats insects, it eats small birds, it eats mice, it eats lizards and frogs. So depending on how big it is, is how much or what it will eat. But can you imagine a little bug actually eating a mice? Like, oh, that's crazy. Or even a small bird, it's, it's insane. So here's a little quick review. So remember we start with the egg case, then we go and have the little nymphs, um, which are the tiny little ones, which are back here. You can see they're very small. And then we have the adolescents, which are the smaller ones, the ones that were on their finger, and then they grow up into be these giant ones. All right, ladybugs is what we are ending with. So what is a ladybug? Well, ladybugs are a type of beetle. They have round body, often with spots. And like other insects, ladybugs have six legs. Okay, that doesn't change. They also have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. Ladybugs have a pair of antenna, which helps them smell or feel the world around them. And ladybugs have two pairs of wings. The outside wings are hard, so here are your outside wings. And they are often, that's where the color is, and they are called elytra. And the second pair are hidden until they are needed, and they are folded underneath those hard wings. And they are thin and vain, so you can see them here, a little close up for you. Now, people often think that the number of spots on a ladybug tells us how old it is. But this is actually not true. So the number, color, and pattern of the spots can tell us which species of ladybug it is. There's lots of different species of ladybug. So this ladybug in the picture is called a seven spot ladybug. And it normally will live between one and two years. So even though it has seven spots on it, it's not seven years old. All right, let's look at the life cycle. So stage one, again, eggs. So the female ladybug lays a bunch of different eggs on plants, and she can lay tens of eggs at a time. So, so lots of different eggs. Um, she doesn't lay more than 100, obviously, but you can see, so this is a tiny ladybug, and those are the eggs, just so you can see the size. So they're not very big. And then after the eggs hatch, after several days, this creature here, this is actually a ladybug larva, and the larva doesn't have wings, so it can't fly, and it just crawls around the leaves looking for food. So it's kind of like a weird caterpillar creature thing, but it's still quite small. And the first thing it eats is its eggshell, but it will also eat other unhatched eggs around it. So it will eat its brothers and sisters if it is starving. So you have to hope that it will eat its own egg and then be full. Um, but the larva's favorite food is very small insects. So if those insects are around, then it will eat those instead. And as it gets bigger, again, the skin doesn't stretch, so they shed or molt, okay? just like the dragonfly did and the moth. So they shed their layers, so they grow bigger as they, as they shed their skin. And then they also have a pupa stage, so it finds a leaf to attach itself to. It sheds its skin for the last time to form a pupa, and remember that the pupas can't move, and that's kind of like a chrysalis, so in the butterfly, that's a similar thing to a chrysalis. And the pupa is where an amazing transformation will take place. And the larva changes and something new starts to develop, which is the adult ladybug. So it takes about a week and then the adult ladybug comes out of the pupa and it normally doesn't have any spots and those will happen after a few days. So there are over 5,000 species of ladybug in the world. These are some of the different types. So not all of the ladybugs that you see are red. Some are yellow, some are brown, some are orange, and some are even black. Some have spots, some have no pattern, and some are like check, they're checkered, okay? 
And just an interesting fact, having bright colors and spots actually lets predators know that ladybugs are toxic. So toxic can hurt their predators. So predators see that and then they're like, oh, I better not eat that one. So can you remember the order? So remember it starts with egg. Then what happens next? You can shout it out. Hopefully you guessed larva. And the next stage is pupa. And after pupa, it is an adult ladybug. Great work. So if you want to know more, there are a few videos that I found for you. There's one on ladybugs. Um, a couple that talk about dragonflies, and then there's one video uh, called, it's about praying mantises, and it's about 25 minutes long. It's actually a cartoon from a animal wildlife show that I used to watch when I was your age, or maybe a little bit older, maybe when my little brothers were your age. Um, it's really cool. It's called Wild Cats, Wild Cats. I believe, and um, yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. It has like cartoon aspects and tells you some information about the praying mantis and praying mantis powers. It's about people who are superheroes as well, just to pique your interest more. So you can check out those four videos. Um, and then there's this really cool activity, and I'm only gonna include this because it's super cool. And I'm actually gonna show you the webpage so you can go through it and take a look. So this is called an Agamore graph, okay, and it shows the life cycle of a ladybug. You can actually probably make one of your own for all of the different life cycles that we are learning about today, but I'm just going to show you the website in case you are interested in checking it out a little bit more. So there is the template. If you click on the link, it will take you to this website, and you can see that it's pretty cool. Okay, all you need for this activity is do, 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 do. so you need some paper, you can print it off. Okay, you need to color it and some scissors and things. So here's the template, and you just print it off at the end. Okay, color it in, and then you cut along the edges. And then some of them you might need help with mom and dad to cut up and down, okay? And then you fold it over just like that. You can see it's really cool. And then like a fan, it has two steps for each, okay? And then you can glue it together. So it folds nicely. So there's the first stage. There's the second stage. So first second on the other side, third, and fourth. So it's pretty cool. Okay, so you can check that out and let me know if you have done it. And let me, yeah, remember you have nothing to submit today, but if you do this, the cool agamograph, then please send me a picture I want to know. Otherwise, happy learning. And uh, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow when we are talking about ants and worm life cycles.